I'm here. Derek, what's up, Doug? Can you let me in? We don't have access to that to the gate there, so just can you mind hopping over? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> hey, there you go. There Whoa, he is. Hey, man. Dude. Oh, thanks for being here, bro. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Was this a sticky, sticky lock? So, well, we just don't have we don't have the key. We lost the key. To that. All right. It's a long story. That's fine. That's cool. Uh, dude, thanks for having me. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for wearing my gear. You know, I love that. I had to represent. Do one of those. <laughs> you did, you know? bro. You did. Hey, listen. I have an idea for the podcast today. Yeah. I was, uh, I was thinking it could kind of go like this. You'd be like a little like one of these. Hop, little turn. Boom. You kind of go between my legs and then over around my neck. I kind of press you up. Beautiful lift. I think people will like that. It's dynamic. Yeah, so I love that. It's good. I, I love it. Uh, I knew, I knew you so like that. this, so we're not we're not dancing today. Yeah, this is a podcast. Totally. We're gonna we're gonna talk. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. So think about. You have an idea for? Like, I do actually. Yeah. I do. I do. I, um, I, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, this we're talking. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. So then maybe it's more something like uh, one of these. You know, you do that and you do like. Derek, hey Derek, it's a podcast. This is a podcast. We're just just talking. No dancing today. Okay. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go talk. Like, tap no, no, we're talking. Let's just let's go talk. Tap dance. Talk. She's my red light kisser, working in the mirror. Stop my God, I love you guys. Today's a very exciting episode because we have one of my greatest friends. I've known this guy for quite a few years in Hollywood. He is an extraordinary overall person, and I'll share a little bit more about him in a second. But ladies and gentlemen, Derek Huff is here. Right. Thank you guys so much. Oh, they love this, you, this dude. Guy, this guy is great. They, man. they love you. Derek Huff, let's hear hey, it. Hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank My you guys. God. Thank you. Well, Derek, I had to write this down because you are quite an accomplished person. If you guys didn't know this, Derek Huff is an Emmy award-winning dancer, choreographer, and actor. He has a six-time champion of. You are a six-time champion of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Damn, six times. Yeah. Sheesh. In addition to his work on television, Derek has appeared in several stage and film productions, including Make Your Move, Hairspray Live, and Singing in the Rain. He's also a New York Times best-selling author and musician, but he's best known for his epic cameos in the Felt Emo Might Delete skits. That's true. That's very true. That's that's what made you the most famous, right? It's it's the funny you say that because actually you talk about the Emmy Awards or yeah. the, the TV shows or whatever it is, you know, all these sort of accolades and stuff. But it's uh, yeah, people come up and say like, "Hey, you're that emo guy." Yeah. Or like, "Hey, you're that that TikTok guy." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they don't recognize you from Dance with the Stars. They're no. like, this guy's from. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Which, by the way, I love that. I love that. I'm like, that's, yeah. It yeah. is. By the way, you know what's cool is like you have been in so much that you have different fans in different areas that recognize you, probably from just TikTok, yeah. probably from just Dancing with the Stars. Maybe some of the E and D fans who recognize you from those videos. But I went to Disneyland with you. Um, I don't know. Was that like a year ago? Yeah. No. No. It, no, it was be right before COVID. That was not. Shut up, dude. Yeah. That was over two and a half years ago. Yeah. Dear God. So I went to, to, um, to Disneyland with you, and you got recognized everywhere. But what I love seeing is it was all from different things. Yeah. Some people were like, I love you on Dancing with the Stars. Some people were like, dude, I love your dances on TikTok. It's, it was just cool to see. No, it was cool, man. It's, I'm, I feel very fortunate to be able to do a lot of things. But, uh, but thanks for having me of course. here, man. This is awesome. I, yeah. uh, I'm obviously a huge fan of E&D. From the uh, get go, and it's funny. I think that I don't think a lot of people. I think people see me as like dancing with the stars, the rhinestones, doing a cha cha or samba, and which is who I am. But I'm also a major like emo kid. Yeah, we t you know I lived in the UK in London oh. um, for ten years, and so we did all the the Guildford rugby clubs. We'd have like underground gigs in like in London. Interesting. We would take our we would take all of our instruments on the subway on the tube. You know, um, drum kits, like uh, the amps, everything. And we'd go like, the doors would open. I'm like, get it on, get it on. We had to get all the equipment on there. And we'd go on. Then we'd go, get it off, get it off. Oh, wow. Um, so, um, yeah, man. It was that, a blast. That's kind of crazy that a lot of people don't know that story about you, that you do have a past of what, how you fell in love with emo music. And part of our show is not just bringing you know, these epic emo artists, but people who are in the limelight that just love emo music. Yes. And so I know that you, we have a, a shared love for Dashboard Confessional yes. and a lot of those other bands, but when you, okay, so what, how old were you when you started your band and what influenced you? Like what, what bands influenced you to start 
a band when you were a kid? So the, the initial story is this. So I moved to England when I was 12 years old by myself, moved, moved in with this family and this kid named Mark Ballas, who people might know from Dance with the Stars as well. Um, he was the only child and he was into like Green Day and Corn and all that stuff. And I was this like little Mormon kid being like, this is the devil's music. <laughs> yes. I actually think I, I had, goes. I think I had his CDs like broken because I convinced his parents that this was Satan's music and like teaching him bad ways yep. and stuff. And he was just like, bro, you're ruining my life. <laughs> and <laughs> were you doing that to mess with him? No, I legit. Or, or you legit felt I weird legit about it. He felt, felt convicted. Yeah. I was like, I was like, this is terrible music. This is bad. This is bad influence. And because that's the way I was sort of conditioned, right? And then I ended up going to a, a corn concert because um, he was like, you got to come, man. You just got to experience it. And so I went to a corn concert and then Freak on a Leash came on and I was bapt I crowd surfed and basically was baptized in first show first, first show. show crowd wow. surfed at Wembley Arena and Damn. was uh baptized into just that kind of music and then of course we, you know went into like you know newfound glory and then like good charlotte all the drive through record you right. know uh artists and then um and then of course my favorite was the used when the used came out that was something like it was like wait a minute yep. this is like it's, that first favorite. record was so good too. Ridiculous. The taste of being. And by the way, it's funny because the used they are a king of the scene. Like yep. everybody loves the used. Yeah. We do a lot of polls, or we ask our our E and D audience, like, who do you want to see on the next cruise? We're always planning a cruise or a festival, and the used is always close to number one. Yeah. People yeah. love the used. I mean, I do too. Like they were a top. They're one of the first five <laughs> bands in the emo scene that I discovered. Yeah. And. Their music is so well written. His voice is perfect on record. Ridiculous. It just works. It gets you. Like it's it'll, so it good. will. It will convert you. It's so. And there was. I have some funny stories actually of living in London. And the, the the good thing about that is being an American kid living in London. I somehow was able to like get go to shows and get in for free because I would pretend like I was the guitar tech. Oh, funny. So I go to like Brixton Academy, you know, which is a big venue out there, and, and like a lot of bands go there and. And I'd be like, hey, yeah, so I'm like, I'm, I'm 15 years old, by the way. And I'm, I'm the guitar tech. And they're like, oh, you're American. You, that must be true. Then go in. And Damn. So I go backstage and just kind of like, you know, be sitting there and then, you know, hanging out with the used and stuff and yeah. chatting with them and being like, this is freaking awesome. So what were you living in London for? Um, I moved in with my coaches um, for, cool. dancing, for dancing. For dancing. And cool. then I went to a school out there, like a theater arts school and and I lived two different lives. I was like, again, I was like training as like a, a professional Latin ballroom dancer and like competing around and training really hard. It was, you know, it took me an hour to get to school every day. At 15? I trained at 12. At 12. Wow. So a young prodigy. Old. Yeah. Yo. And, but then on, but then I would be like, put my eyeliner on and paint my nails and grow my hair out and have all this, the, the punk rock stuff and play in a band. And so I, li I was like, Two different people. That's rad. Yeah, it was That's amazing. Fun. It's funny you say that you 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 had to go to a concert. You had to go see Corn to really get it. Because I tell people all the time, like the you know you can put on a record and and you can find reasons to not like a band or a performance or you know the vocals are too high pitch or they're screaming. This is weird. But when you see it live, there's just something completely different. Yeah. And I just I just love that you you, you had the experience <laughs> where you actually had to go to a show. Yeah. And that was when That's you fell in love with it. That's what changes the moment. Yeah. So yeah. by the way, speaking to that, um, on so Bar my buddy Baron, who was on the cruise, yep. DJ, these are like my old, my, some of my first friends in LA from years ago. And um, and Ariel had never seen Under Oath either, right? I'm So their first time seeing Under Oath or really listening to Under Oath was on the cruise mm. and they all got it. It was like an aha moment. They were like, holy shit, the energy, the vibe, the Spencer's screams, Aaron drumming and singing live, like they understood yeah. after seeing Under Oath and Silverstein and these bands on the cruise. That's the moment for people. Man. Like you get drugged to a show and that was the same thing for me is I didn't know anything about it until my best friends were in a band in Portland and I would go see their shows and that's what that's how I fell in love with emo music was because they were a screamo emo band and I just saw it live and I fell in love. And also also is the audience too, the people. Yeah. The people are like um they are like the audience and the the, the they are so <laughs> like just kind, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was funny because I, I would go to like, I went to an Eminem concert, I think. And I remember just being like, stepping on someone's foot, I was like, I'm going to die. Like it was just, everybody was like, don't touch me, don't get around me. You go to like an emo concert or a rock concert, whatever it is, 
and you like punch somebody in the face and they're like, yeah, man. Yep. Like, it's just like punch so them in like, the face, then get knocked down, then you pick them back up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but literally, like, it's, it's like, it's like, it was like this weird, like, it seems so aggressive, but it's like actually one of the safest places you can be. I don't think there's any family quite like the emo scene community at live shows. Like you said, like you can be at any other concert, a rap concert, a pop concert, bump into someone, they're going to be pissed at you. Spill their, bump and spill their drink, they're going to be pissed. Yeah. The, the emo fans, like the, the fans of the scene, they are the sweetest people. And we experienced this on cruise year one. Is it, Listen, it is a little bit, um, it's a little bit concerning knowing that I'm going to be on a boat with 2,500 E&D fans and they're all going to know who I am. And I'm True. like, what if some of them are weird or what if some of them are mean or what if some of them are haters or whatever? Yeah. I, every single person was just genuine, was so genuine and yeah. beautiful and loving and kind. And like, that's what made the vibe of the cruise. What it is, is the people of the scene. Yeah. And so that's, I, that's why I love the, the emo music so much. And like the just people, the people, the, the people. culture. It's yeah. It's amazing. It's the best. So has, has, has emo music, I mean, obviously you're, and I want to get back to this actually. Six yeah. time winner of Dancing with the Stars. You're like the Mike are you the Michael Jordan of Dancing with the Stars? You I got six rings. I suppose. Six are rings, you the most, baby. Are you the most winningest? <laughs> yeah. You are. Yes. Is yeah. Mark Ballas doesn't winningest. even come close. Well, no, he, he actually just won the last season. Yep. And um he now has three. Okay. Three wins. Um and so yeah, it's he's actually the the, the second most winningest now. Has your dancing been inspired at all by emo music? Or do you I mean, obviously you stick hearts to the traditional style when you're when you're competing but did, does any of that i mean in the felt emo videos you're mm -hmm. doing cherry pickers and you're doing some windmills <laughs> and stuff like is is any of it influenced at all or is it is it pretty cut and dry like i um, keep the tradition I, it, it's it depends i will say i remember doing like a school project and um dance to basket case um and they were all like this is a weird song choice but I, when we did choreography to it it was actually it was fantastic yeah it was so good Hey boys, sorry to interrupt your podcast, but I have some exciting cruise news. The E&D Cruise Year 2 is completely sold out. However, we do have a cruise cabin for two that we will be giving away to one lucky YouTube subscriber. Just make sure you're subscribed to our channel, like our videos, and let's see you in the comments. We're going to scroll through the comments and pick one of you guys to give a cruise to. That's all the news I have for today. Have a great show, guys. So for those, so me being a dancer, um, the way I even got into dancing was through music. Right. Um, I played drums. Okay. I was a drummer in a, in a Beach Boys tribute band. You know, learning how to play drums, understanding rhythm and, and you know, beats and just the way it makes you feel and keeping time. Um, when I eventually went to dance class, which I didn't want to go to, I was like, this is for girls. No. And then I walked in there. I was like, yo, there's girls here. This is kind of cool. Nice. <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, I'm hey, the only guys. Actually, not bad. Um, but I, I picked it up pretty quickly as far as like understanding music and timing and rhythm. So music and dance, I mean, they're, they're a perfect pair, you know, they really are. Yeah. So music in general, I mean, on the way here, I was listening to like classic rock, like, yep. you know, like Steve Miller band and, and, you and you'll know. probably get, you'll probably just get ideas from that, right? You'll listen to Steve Miller band There's or so Dave things. Matthews or random bands and be yeah. like, I could do a number to this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, and that's the thing with like emo music though, where I actually don't think about, Oh, dance, dance or choreography interesting so hmm. but i like that yeah yeah I, it gives you a break. break it gives me a break i can actually just get like i'm just like in the feels you know what i mean yeah. i'm in i'm in the like the song and like the way it makes me feel versus just thinking like oh i could do like a cool paso to this or like a cool samba or something yeah. you know i'm just solely into the music and that's what it's a good nice little it's a nice little break for yeah. me for sure so, so I wanted to ask you because I didn't want to let this go. And you said earlier that you moved to the UK. Were you 12 when you moved there? Yeah. Were your parents not there? No. So you live with just the coaches or one of the coaches? Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, do you feel a little bit that you raised yourself at a younger age because you didn't have your parents around or did you, it was a coach, a family friend? No, they, they became, they definitely became like my family, you know? Um, yeah. But it, I was like such like a, there was such a regiment, you know, like I said, my schedule was like. You know, waking up at seven, getting on a train, um, the river, you know, the Thames Link service mm -hmm. across the River Thames to be an hour to get to school by train every day, then walking, then going to school from like nine to six, walking back to the train station, an hour to get back home over the River Thames, wow. Damn, then dude. eat, and then go to rehearsal for dance from like seven to 11, or so it was more like eight to 11, and then do it all over again. So I was wow. so busy, I didn't really have time to sort of yeah. like, wasn't like raising myself. I was just like 
You were going already? Going, man. I was just going. But but I will say, too, again, going back to the music thing. And actually, I'll say this, too. In London, that the music scene, the emo scene, at least at, when I was growing up, was super strong. Yeah. So strong. And it was such a cool culture, such a cool wow. group of people. And loving that kind of music. Damn. And... Um, and, and, and even being on the train every day, so think two hours on train every day, being a little kid from Utah, looking out the window, looking at the River Thames and Big Band and the whole yeah. thing, raining outside, that's when I listen to music. Yeah. So for two hours a day, I literally had a moment solely dedicated to, dedicated to, to listening yeah. to music. And Damn. so I, it's funny, even as a adult, I'm like, I miss that. I miss that kind of time where I just yeah. listen to music. Yeah. Well, dude, it's funny because... First of all, I wasn't that young when I was on my own. I was kind of on my own at 17. Yeah. And so I feel like a geezer compared to being 12 years old and being like kind of feeling like not feeling like you, your coach was your became your family. But yeah. like, I think that to be successful when you get when you start young and you just hop on buses, hop on trains, yeah. rehearse, work hard like that was embedded because you're one of the hardest per working people that I know you dance you choreograph you are on dance with the stars you're doing tiktoks you like mm. you're doing youtube like you do so much and like i do a lot too and so i i kind of relate to you on starting sure. young and yeah. learning how to hustle at a very young age well, and you i just, feel like yeah i feel like that's probably owed to why you are as successful as you are now is because you decided to start working when you were a kid. So, so was you, was your family supportive then of you? I mean, did yeah. you have siblings? Uh, like, it's I don't know. It's, for me to think about someone at twelve years old going yeah. across the world to to follow dance, I mean, you must have been a prodigy. You must have been pretty good. But did they have some dance experience, or did they know kind of how the the lane that you needed to go in to be successful? Basically, it was uh, it was just a. a a moment of events that just kind of worked. Yeah. Um, it was during my parents' divorce. Mm -hmm. So I was super emo. Yeah. You know, I was like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I was getting into the wrong crowd. Like, you know, I was skipping school. I was getting beaten up at school. I was really bullied severely. And and not just like mean things. Like I was getting like, you know, Your ass kicked. Bag beaten up, like hung oh, geez, in trees and, yeah. and tied in fields, you know, hog tied and stuff. And, and, uh, so hogtied, hogtied in a field and left there for a couple of hours and stuff. But Whoa. dear God, um, yeah. So when I dance was like a refuge for me, like the, like mm. the people and like it was just like a good community and, and and just good environment. And so when these coaches came to the studio, they just saw this saw something in me. They're like, oh, he's you know he's talented and and they had their son Mark, who was the only child. And we were kind of friends, and they were like, "Hey, do you want to come be like a friend to our son for?" It's Mark's parents. It's Mark's parents. It's Mark's Mark wow, Bounce's parents. Yeah. Okay, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mark's parents who are um, they were like world champions. Yeah, you know. And oh, wow, like, do you want to be a friend to to Mark, our son, and just come just come for like two months, and we'll train with us? And like, I'm like, I wow, like, please, because I'm things are not looking good right now. Like you know, with what's going on, and so I willingly and my parents were gracious enough to let me go and but then things started going well like I was like competing I was doing better and I had structure I was like I had major structure I was improving I was like this is great yeah so even my parents were like all right it's time to come home I was like I don't want to go I'm, I'm loving this like yeah. I'm on a trajectory right now I'm actually doing great things and I love you guys but like I'm, I'm doing something right now and yeah and kind of knowing that at like 13 years old was kind of weird looking back because now I see my nieces and nephews yeah and I'm like I was that young. Wild. It's yeah. wild what? to see that. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, but then at me at that age, my mind, I was like, yo, so I'm 12 years old. Let's go. Like, yeah. let's, you know. Yeah. So, okay. So starting at 12, what age did you finally feel like, oh, I'm successful? Did you ever have an age or a moment or a time where you're like, what was your, I made it moment? I made, I don't know if I've even had that yet, to be honest with you. So like, really? like, no, I don't know if there's, I've ever feel like I've made it. I've done it. It's. There's been some definitely like success stories and moments, triumphs, you know, that I look back on I'm like, wow, that was unbelievable. Um, and I think one of them was like winning the world championships, you know, when I was sort of going into, it was at the Czech Republic. I was representing Great Britain and I was kind of like supposed to be like fourth or fifth, you know, it was like the best two couples from each country come together. Oh, and and in your mind or your coach's mind, there were people that were slightly better. That yeah, could win. yeah. So, it was okay. just kind of like, and it's all very kind of political. It does all this whole. It's this whole. God, it's, it's a, a there's a it's a whole world, guys. I get it. Yeah, okay. a full bar world. It's like it's Whoa. bizarre. 
But I was kind of like, all right, I'm fifth, sixth kind of thing, maybe. And then um, anyways, and I had a bad neck. I couldn't move my neck very well. And I just, I don't know, man. I just got into this flow state. Like I was just like, everything was clicking. I was having fun. Mm. I never had fun at competitions. I was always like really self-destructive and in my head about competitions and stuff. And it was something I had to really work on. But this one, I was just like having fun and enjoying it. I was just, and I ended up winning. And it was uh, wow. one of the greatest moments of my competitive you know, life. And how old were you then? It was like, how old was I? I was 17. Wow. 17 and, world champion. Yeah. And in that category, like yeah. the youth world champions. And, and, um, but then it was crazy. It was like the next day, you talked about everyone for the highest of highs. I remember going to, we went to Auschwitz the next day. Oh shit. Just to kind of, cause we wanted, it was like to see that and to experience that cause it was close by. And, and it was just one of those like immediately like going from like the highest moment of my life to being at the like, most like absolutely humbled and just whoa, right. sober and just like, whoa, look, let's, let's take a moment here. So um, that's powerful. Jeez. It was pretty, it was pretty wild. And I, I always tell the that story with that story because it was such a, again, it was like a moment where I was realizing that like, you know, what is competing and winning and all these things really about? Like, what's the purpose of it all? Right. Um, to have that juxtaposed with. Something like oh, Joshua. it's just crazy. It was just mind blowing, but um, but anyways, yeah, man, it's it's been a quite crazy journey, and I yeah. could, it's been some wild stories for sure. So when you first got okay, so it's weird that I have a little bit of I I've had an my own I've made it moment where it was on Vine, and I blew up pretty quick on Vine. Yeah, and so I was working at a restaurant, and then suddenly I got to like I remember the first person who recognized me. I, I was serving them at the restaurant. And they, both the girls, I've never been recognized before. Both the girls, I walk up and they both like just look at me like this with like wide eyes. And I yeah. was like, what's happening right now? Like, I was like, what? Is there not something on my face? I was so <laughs> weirded out. And then and they're like, hi, Matt. And I'm like, hi. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and then they go and I'm like, you guys, what's up? You guys good? Like how? And they're like, we love your vines. And maybe at that point I had like. Uh, 50,000 or 100,000 followers. It was my first time being recognized. And I was like, oh, thank you. And from that day forward, I started getting recognized. And it, that was that was the, oh, I'm getting recognized moment. But when I was able to quit my job and only make money from doing Vine videos full time, yeah. that was like my my moment. But obviously, that's a s much smaller moment than World Young, winning yeah. than, than winning something like being the... the what what champ, what's that championship called that you won? Oh, was it was this, uh, the, the Youth World Championship. The, the Youth Latin World Championship, yeah. yeah. I mean, dance, that's so yeah. different from that, let alone... From what everyone in the world seems to, seems to think as one of the most accomplished is you've won three Emmys, you won three when you won your first Emmy. That was pretty. Dope. Was that, that insane was cool. to you? Because like I couldn't imagine. Like I that got a YouTube cool. plaque for a hundred thousand subscribers, and I showed it off on my Instagram, and I was like, <laughs> "I'm the man." <laughs> you know, like no that that one was. I would say that was one was really that was really special because the the choreography category is usually in the creative arts Emmys. Mm -hmm. Which isn't televised. It's not on prime time. Which is still, it's amazing. It's incredible. But this this year, particular uh, for some reason, I think Neil Patrick Harris was hosting it, and he wanted the choreographer category to be in the prime time. And we did this whole big performance, and we did like this like choreography thing with Game of Thrones and Mad Men and Big Bang Theory, and but we choreographed all these cool pieces with those like as themes. Mm -hmm. And so it was this massive performance, and it was like brrr, choreography, and it's the prime time, you know all my favorite stars in the audience, the whole thing. And then we just performed and danced. So I'm breathing heavy. I'm like, and we get up there, we line up and they're like, and now for the best, you know, uh, Emmy for the best choreography goes to, and these are all like my colleagues who I'm huge fans of. And they yell my name out. And I'm like, what the? Whoa. Oh, you had no idea you were winning. I just couldn't believe it. Like yeah. I was like, what? And so, um, it was, that was an incredible. Yeah. I actually remember like hanging out with Aaron Paul that night and walking around and, and I was a big fan of Breaking Bad and stuff. And he was the first time I met him. And, and I was like, man, what do I do with this? Do I like take this home? He goes, no, man, you like you wear that all night. <laughs> you tear that around and you just all night long, man. And I was yeah. like, OK, if you said I can, I can. You, you know? By the way, though, so much respect for him saying that, because I think so many people are a bit too humble with it. And it's OK if you're it, like, listen, I'm being humble is amazing. That's a like I, I try to be as humble as I can be. But like, I think if I won an Emmy, an Oscar, a Grammy, I would have that thing out all night and just be getting hammered and being like, look at my Grammy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would free, like that would you be the best. You gotta celebrate, man. You, you gotta celebrate to. your, you gotta celebrate your, those moments. Yeah. And there's been definitely many times in the past where I'm like, I was like, I didn't celebrate that moment. Like I, I, when I would have been dancing with the stars, yeah. there's there times when I was, I just would win and the next day I was just depressed. And damn, and I'm wow. like, 
What you have, the hell was that dude, about? You have to celebrate those moments. And yeah. like Ariel's, she celebrates everything. Yeah. And I love that about her because I'll have an accomplishment or like we'll put out a, uh, a new song and music video and it does very well. And then the next day I just get back to work and that's yeah. it. And Ariel's been the one to tell me, dude, take some time to take this in. Yeah. Really enjoy your accomplishment because you spent so much time building a cruise and selling out a cruise, right? For example, so and she goes, "Know that that was a big accomplishment, and really take it in." And on the cruise, I obviously did. Um, also, funny, Ariel was with Aaron Paul when he the night he won his first semi. Oh, really? So she's in pictures, like so That's they're, they're like best friends. She's one, yeah. like they're, they're they've known each other for a long time, but. Um, and so she was with him the whole night and I, there's pictures of him and he's like, yeah, so Dude, that's all I, that's so that's, the one that's, of like nine or something that he won, right? Didn't he win? Like, he's won um, quite a few. He's and I mean, dude, like break, breaking bad is it just one of the it's best it, shows dude. of all time. Gavin, did you watch it? I got to season three. Yeah. Oh, opinion. Season, season, season four gets heavy. I didn't finish it. Season Wait, four okay. gets heavy. We, we have to talk about this yeah, because why? breaking yeah. bad is, is in my opinion. Yeah. Breaking Bad and Succession are the two best shows that I've ever seen. Yeah. Breaking Bad still has number one in my heart. Succession is like a close number one, but it's number two. Yeah. So I couldn't imagine watching three seasons and just stopping. Yeah. What happened? Do <laughs> uh, you really want to know? <laughs> I do want to know. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this to Aaron Paul. Yeah, so this will be a fun one. Uh, so I, I was actually, I was, in, I was in the clink, dude. And I was in the clink and people were watching Breaking Bad and, you know, uh, Criminals want to watch other criminals do shit. And uh, so I'd see it on I, and I'd consumed it. And then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm not watching TV anymore. I'm just going to take this off my list. And so Whoa. I stopped watching it. And then when I got out, I had obviously no desire to get back into anything that put me back in that mind state. So, God. Um, so yeah, I, I got in a little bit of trouble for weed when I was 20 years old. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was, I was yeah. oh, thank you for telling me. Cause yeah. I, was, I was like, do I ask him Am why I he was here? in the, yeah. why I was in the clink? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it, 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 it was a formative, uh, you know, time of my life, but, yeah. but it was something that I was like, yeah, I just like go TV when I was like 20, 21. Damn. Man. Yeah. So I did, I didn't finish it. So, so I mean, yeah, would I, you finish it now, or or is that part of an old memory that you're like, I don't want to even? No, go there. I would finish it now, but I I ha and I've tried, but it 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 is a little hard to get yeah. back into. But I'm not gonna it. lie, the season four that was a push. Heavy. That yeah. was a push. I remember it getting super dark, and I was like, I need to watch Family Guy after this, yeah, yeah or yeah. something. I need to watch something, yeah, happy. And it, yeah, I think it, I think it got like really stressful in that part of the show yeah. too, where it was like, you know, was anything going right for him? You know, I don't know. So yeah. so yeah, it was it was hard for me to get back into it. Um, that's that's yeah. goody. That's yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So okay, so is Breaking Bad one of your favorite shows? It is amazing. It's so good, incredible, right? incredible. And it was one of those again too, like. Being like living in Hollywood and stuff, and, and in Dance with the Stars, you meet all these different celebrities and different people from walks of life and stuff. But then, like, you'll meet like an Aaron Paul, where like you're a super fan from the show, and then you're like, this guy is actually a, one of the most beautiful men I've ever met. Like, just such a loving guy and so so fantastic. And, yeah. And um, and it just makes it even better. So it makes you even like and 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 Brian Cranston too, dude. They're both and like Brian such... Cranston be like, I just love. Fun again, it's so hilarious. I just love Dancing with the Stars, you know, and I just yeah. love the dancing. It's just fantastic. I was like, what the freak? You watch Dancing yeah. with the Stars? Yeah. Or like Anthony Hopkins coming up to you and saying like, I just, oh, I just love the dancing. And you're like, what the? Yeah. Who? What? Oh, and, the places and, you'll and, go. And, and you mentioned like, what's your moment? Like, like the uh, you made it moment. And in some of those moments, like we go to these parties, we're like, I don't, yeah. belo I don't belong here. Why am I here? Yeah. I'm just a better dancer. And why am I? And then you have these like major, like Oscar winners come up to you and be like, I just love what you do. Dude. I just love dancing, and I just like oh, I just. And I'm like, wow, that's that's really freaking cool. Who so, are some Who are some of those people that have gone up to you, and you're like, holy shit, like oh, you man. know me, you like my work. I mean, dude, um, honestly, like honestly, countless, and I don't, I don't mean that to be like no, I ghost. It. It's just it's just like so many events. I want you to know something. You're yeah. very famous. So just, I want you to know no. that. <laughs> a lot, a lot I don't, of, I don't no, feel that no, way at you're, all, though. You're, really on, you're on a hit TV show for many seasons. Dancing with the Stars is huge. Like, so many people watch it and yeah. love it. It's and crazy. I think that it's funny because I, I have a, with any sort of recognition that I get, I have a similar mindset of being like, I'm not a famous person sure. and nothing compared to what you're doing on actual TV. So like, it's gotta be strange when you still don't have that mindset of being like, you're like, cause you're such a normal guy. That's, that's why we're friends. You're my you're my friend. Like that's why you're my friend, and like we hang as friends. Yeah. But the rest of the world will see you as like, holy shit, that's Derek Huff, and they freak out. So yeah. like, is there any specific person that 
you met that was like, oh my God, I'm so excited to meet you. JLo comes to mind because you guys have such a uh, a fun relationship. Yeah. And, and she's JLo. Yeah. And like, I'll see you do like BTS stuff with JLo casually. Yeah. And I'm like, there's there's my buddy Derek just <laughs> dancing with JLo. <laughs> you know, like, is there anyone oh, man. that you, I don't know. I, I love, I love these, like people love actually, these Hollywood stories. Okay. I, I'm a, this yeah. is actually kind of a funny story. I don't know if this is like a story about like, okay. I don't know if this is like a story about somebody. Okay. I'll just say it. <laughs> so I was like in this nightclub and stuff and, and we were having a good time and I just yelled out after party at my place. And, and I don't remember, I don't recall giving the address or where I lived or anything like that. And we go back and, and I, li- I have a, two gates to my old condo, my own, my old apartment, you know, and I'm rolling up and people are with me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden I just see this guy with like this big hat just kind of like and swaying in front of my door. And I'm like, who's that person? And he's like, just waiting there. And I'm like, hello? And I turn over and it's John Mayer. And he goes, hey man, it's like after party of yours. And I was like, what the <laughs> freak? That's so So I was like, okay, sick. let me just let you in. He was like, open the door. I was like, and he just, you know, talks about, we we're just talking, we we're taking we're having a good time. And I have a guitar and an amp there and, and he puts the guitar on and no he way. jams out for three hours. Just oh. jamming out, and I remember trying to like record it. I plugged it into like an amp on my computer, and I, I it was like the gain was way too high. Oh no, it's all distorted. But I, I had it, and it was this whole like three hour session of John Mayer just jamming. That's wow, awesome. it was pretty cool. But um, but there's there's been a few stories where like, you know, even going to like Prince's house the night of the Oscars when I first lived here, and and that was one of the coolest stories I've ever had because. Was it an Oscars after party? It was an after party. Okay, Oscar, an after people party. walking around their Oscars. And I'm like, just moved to LA. I'm like, is this just what it's like? Wow. And then it was Chris Tucker was like, hey, man, you're that dance with Starsky, right? He's like, get over here. I was like, I love you in Rush Hour. Oh, <laughs> you know, my just God. so stupid. And then Prince did like a three hour. You, uh, the first thing I heard was like this. And these trumpets coming down the stairs, you know. And, and then he did a three hour set in his living room. You know, what a legend! It was ridiculous, man. It was insane, and there, I don't know why I said that. Oh, Wait, because Prince did a set at his house. At his house, okay. Prince for three hours. It was the most amazing experience ever, and, I, and that was like everything's been downhill from there as far as just like Hollywood experiences. Because that was, have you ever thought about the best. having a party at your house and then setting up a choreography set for the people that you invited? <laughs> <laughs> could you, could I'm you like, five, six, seven, eight. You Let's go. You're like, hey, everybody come over to the house. And then you make the grand entrance to your, to your <laughs> yeah, party. Yeah. yeah. I'll be everybody sit down. I'm about to perform. Like only Prince could do that. Only, <laughs> Dude, I was going to say, Prince. that's such an odd thing to do is to invite people to your house for an after party and then you perform at your house. That's so sad. But you're right. Only people like a Prince could do it. Yeah. Like, that's, and we would all be like thankful. And like, thank, thank you for, you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. We wanted to see this. Yeah, so we feel sick. blessed. It was so sick. There was actually... Um, Going back to just like fun experiences too, uh, and and more like sort of the, like rock experiences and emo and stuff is was uh, I was on my way to school in London, and we're in my we're in our full like what do you call it like uh, Your uniforms uniforms right yeah. like these blue uniforms, and Mark and I were like dude Reading's going on Reading Festival, it's like let's just let's just go, and there was literally like a train at King's Cross Station, and we we're just like let's go so we just hopped on the train went to Reading with our like school bags and you know um what do you call it uniforms and we went to, we we didn't have any tickets or anything like that and i run into this guy and it it ha- ends up being the used manager and i just like hey man i'm from utah they're from utah like hey like can we get and he slaps backstage passes on us he just goes oh yeah sure boom gives us backstage all access passes Sick. and so from us just being at King's Cross Station like two hours before, so now we're backstage hanging out. We're in the trailer with some 41, Metallica's over here, System of the Down, The Used, All American Rejects. Like, damn. It was such, uh, it was ridiculous. And then we actually got on stage in front of like 100,000 people at Reading Festival and in our uniforms. And we're just like, there's, I have a picture. I took a picture of like no one of those disposable cameras. It was one of those gnarly. How'd like, you get on stage? What what would you do? We just, dude, we just blagged. We were really good blaggers back then. We nice. were just like, hey, Damn. we just, hey, you know, we're just all access. We're with the used and oh, <laughs> you, guys, you, you hustled your way in. We hustled our way in, and before you know, we're on stage with some forty one singing uh, 
Yeah. Well, not on I'm, stage, like I'm on the stage. Yeah, on the side stage. Deep, and yeah. I'm trying to keep up yeah. above in my head. Oh, <laughs> man. Good song. So, dude, what, at that at that show, having that experience, were there any bands that you hadn't listened to yet, but you fell in love with there? Like, of all those bands, were you like, blown away by one band no and then became a fan no they i was fans of all of them okay. <laughs> like i was like okay, yeah, i was like system of the down oh my gosh it was like all of them were so good except it was sad to see like all american rejects getting bottled terribly oh no like and good charlotte actually got majorly bottled because they uh they were kind of moving to pop at that time and mm -hmm. and reading oh, so the fans weren't into it reading were not really not into it. Stuff. Oh, wait so so all american rejects and who else Good Charlotte. And Good Charlotte. Wow. Yeah, they got bottled pretty bad at that one. And I, But I remember being like, I, was, I still love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine playing a show where the fans are just like booing you or not? Yeah. In, like, that would just be a horrible thing. That's an agent problem. And honestly, dude. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, yes, that's an agent problem. Make sure they're on the right on the right bill. Yeah. Um, but it, was, it was also a time, too, because... You know, they were playing around with different types of sounds, like, yep. you know, like drums that weren't live, right? Like that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep. And at the time that in that scene, like that's not accepted. Yep. If it's not live, then we don't want to hear about it. Yep. And yeah. it's not it's not worthy of us, of our music. Now it's so funny. Like you have backing tracks, backing tracks, th like like synthesizers and yeah. all these different types of things in music. And it's totally just like, it's like, yeah, that's awesome. You know? So yeah, yeah. it was, it was just that time when it wasn't accepted. I feel like. So tell me a little bit about seeing like dating channel Elizabeth back then. Um, and, and like, did you just feel like the fucking man? I mean, that was like <laughs> for a period of time, that was every American dream. I, dude, I, I will never forget seeing American pie and seeing like, like that scene with J the huge scene with Jason Biggs, where you, you see some nudity. That's when I knew I was straight. I was yeah. like, "This is the moment." I was like, "I'm definitely straight after seeing that scene." Um, so but funny. like that was yeah, like Evan said, like that was was that the first like like celebrity personality that you had dated for sure. Yes, um, it was funny actually too because it was my second partner on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. Yeah, so we we were got it. So I was, and it was funny. The the funny story about that, and actually my first partner too, but. Um, not that we, nothing like we didn't date or anything like that, nothing like that, but like I was this really scrawny little, like, you know, 22 year old kid. And I'm their partner, and they're like, wait, hold on. Well, I wanted like Max, like this, like, you know, big, strong, like Russian dude, or, you know, and, and I'm like, hi guys, I'm about to teach you this cha cha, you know, and yep. they're kind of like, oh, dang, we got this, <laughs> we got the short end of the stick here. This is lame. <laughs> And so she actually was bummed. She actually said that story with me. And she was like, she's like, yeah, I was really bummed when I opened the door and I saw you there. Oh. And, <laughs> and so, and so I had to like earn my stripes. I had to like earn the respect and earn like, no, no, no I'm a good partner. Trust me. And so I, I really felt that pressure. But I didn't really like. We didn't really get along. Like, um, because she was, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Just didn't really vibe. And then actually, what happened was I, I got hurt. I really hurt my neck really bad, and I was like literally wheeled off in a gurney and a in a thing. And she says she's like in that moment I realized how much I cared about you, and it was like this like oh so sweet. moment you know. And um, yeah, and we ended up dating for a while, and uh, but yeah, that's it was, wild. It was kind of well, a wild thing. Wild there's thing. there's yeah. such a it's interesting because there's such a stigma about like male dancers, and we talked about this earlier. And I don't know if when you said that you used to get beat up in school if it sure. had to do with kind of like that because now it's so accepted to be a male dancer and you can be a male dancer and be straight. Yeah. It's completely, that's normal, right? But I, but back then especially, it was kind of like frowned upon or like like guys try to be so macho be like, that's gay. Like just that weird kind of shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like you actually dating like the it girl at the time kind of like you, you, you dropped the mic in front of all the guys. You <laughs> Any guy that like ever was like, that's dancing's yeah. for girls, whatever. You yeah, literally yeah. just go, sorry guys, might drop that mic. <laughs> might have changed the landscape of culture with that one. Well, I don't, I, I, I don't know. It was it for me. It's funny actually about that because it was. I, I I certainly was like tormented as a kid, like for being a dancer and stuff at my in my particular culture because in my particular environment. Because I hear stories about my other friends who dance and they're like, I never got that, you know. And I'm like, well, that's I'm glad that you didn't experience yeah. that. But um. But it's interesting too, especially with dance. Like I even spoke, spoke about this today. You know, um, I think with the, the thing with the 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 male sort of like um, mindset with dance is that it's a scary thing to think about because it's a very vulnerable thing yep. mm -hmm. to dance to move because 
you know, in like movement, like to go work out or sports, it's like, okay, this is what you do. You can put the ball in the hoop or like you do this. There's like, there's like a guideline to, you know, to go by. You're doing told what to do. It's like, whoa, you know, lifting stuff. But to dance, you're, you're showing a part of yourself and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to show that. Like, yeah. I don't want to like, I don't want you to see me. Yeah. Um, but we all dance, you know, people, guys are like, oh, yo, I don't dance. I don't dance. I'm like, when did you, I'm like, well, when did you decide that? Yeah. Cause we all danced at one That's, point when we were yeah. kids, man, we That's were like running so around, true. we all yeah. danced, we all moving around. We had this freedom. We were like, Hey. And so for me, uh, being a, a, a dancer, you know, there's, when we talk about masculinity or anything like that, you know, for me being a dan, I'm at my most masculine when I am dancing Yeah, because it makes me present you know it puts me in the moment and i'm not thinking about anything else and for me one of the most masculine things you can be be is present yeah mm -hmm. is present with somebody is actually i'm here i am not thinking about anything else i'm right here and that sturdiness that steadfastness is like that is masculinity yeah um and so for me dancing puts me in that place and it's it's a powerful thing and it's really cool when like dancing with the stars for instance you have like super bowl champions you know, UFC fighters, yeah. World Series champions. I mean, you name it, just these, you know, major athletes. And they're like, holy crap, that dancing is freaking hard. It's so exhausting. It's difficult. It's tiring. And I think that's been really cool to see the the landscape of dance, not just be appreciated for an art form, but be appreciated for the, the, ath the athlete, yeah. the, the athleticism of it. So we actually have an important question that just came in from our producer. He just texted to me. Oh, God. Uh, Gordon asks, if you can kiss any man in the world, who would it be and why? Matt Ketchell. Wow. Actually, you know, you know, actually, you know who it would be right now? <sighs> why am I forgetting his name? 1975. Oh. Matt Healy. Matt Healy. Like, like, and because I just saw that he did that. Yeah. And I was like. I want to kiss Matt. Wait, that, saw that he did what? He kissed. Oh, he got a guy up on stage and, and he him? just full on made out with the dude. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I was like, That's, I, I wouldn't say no to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, would. so would I we say would. Matt Healy's your man your man crush? He's pretty he's I, I I think he's hilarious. Okay. He's funny and he's talented. Yeah. I've had a man crush on David Beckham for David Beckham for David a long Beckham. time. For sure. I love his look. I love his tattoos. I love his like <laughs> his demeanor. I think the British teeth, I wouldn't mind some Invisalign or something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like overall, David Beckham, uh he he's top for me. Chris Hemsworth. I mean, you I mean he's not, you know, he's not but you know, I'd let yeah. him hold me. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, just, imagine just Chris Hemsworth just holding I just, you that's just it. So tight I, like I wouldn't want anything else. I was like, I was like, could you just could you just like pick me up and hold me for yeah. five minutes? Who um who are some of Haley's uh crushes? Chris Hemsworth is one of them. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So I think girl, girl, girls are never shy. No. They're never shy about saying who they're like no. who they're into. So hers is Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think hers is him. And then uh I'm trying to think. I was trying. To, I'm now. I'm trying to think of like all the other guys where I'm like, yeah, he's a yeah. good looking man. Like, yeah, I would kiss that man. There's, there's. I've just recently said that about somebody, and I can't think about it. I'm like, mm -hmm. he's a great, great looking man. And Ariel's is obviously Bieber. Yeah, you know what's funny is so. Is it weird that you know Bieber, but then at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was gonna say this is what kind of changed is her crush has been Bieber for a long time. And she's obviously a little bit on the older side to have Bieber fever, but she does. Yeah. And um, <laughs> loves his voice, loves his music. I do, I do too. But like, she loves a lot more than that about him. And <laughs> and she's and then we met Bieber, yeah. right? Or she met him before me. And he's so close with one of our friends, uh, Jason Kennedy. They're like best friends. And so we now see him often. Yeah. At Jason's house and like in intimate settings, to where now he's like kind of part of a friend group. And so that's kind of changed for her because once you become friends with someone, uh, you're not that they're not as talented or attractive as they were before, yeah. but the yeah. crush just turns into more of something, their friendship. And now that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So the crush has kind of like in a way uh, subsided, subsided a little bit. Yeah. But um, it's pretty fun that she got to meet her crush mm -hmm. and become friends with her. It's crush. also too, because it's kind of it's kind of um, it's not. OK, how do I say this? Like sometimes if I say like a celebrity crush, um, it sometimes has to change because I'll meet that person and it's like we actually might run into these people and there there might actually be opportunities there. Like someone's like, it's like, I can't really say my celebrity crush because it's not really like far out that 
we actually might bump into each other and yeah. then something yeah. might happen. You know, a, yeah. a spark might happen. A so, spark, it could be awkward. A so spark whatever could I like, happen. Whenever I wake with Haley, like I'm always, uh, when we talk about celebrity crushes, I'm like, who will I never run into? <laughs> like, yeah. Who's someone I would just will never run into? And Because you don't want yeah. them to know that because you're in the entertainment business. So you don't want them to see you yeah, in the, at a well, party and be like, happened. he has a crush on me. No, it's happened in the past where like I say like a celebrity crush and then like we'll go somewhere and then we're like hanging out with that person all night and then Haley's kind of looking at me like... Yeah, she's, oh, she's giving okay. you that. <laughs> no, no, she's no, not. She's yeah. not. But like in my mind. Well, she, by yeah. the way, I feel the same way because I have two celebrity crushes. One I'll never get near, and it's Rihanna. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'll never get near her because I, she's so famous and yeah. so far removed from like people that I know that I'll just never see her. But I think <laughs> Rihanna's so sexy. And uh, another is Margot Robbie and yeah. Ariel. Like, kind of has similar vibes. Yeah. Some, she sometimes gets. I see that. Gets, like, people look at her like I thought you were Margot Robbie, so yeah. she gets that a little bit. Um, and so I've made it very clear that she's my crush. To the point where I've wondered if I run, if we are at a party, if I go to one of your parties or an after Emmy party and Margot Robbie's there, is it is Ariel going to be eyeing me if I get in a conversation with her? Yeah, do, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like it hey, makes me a little like, bit nervous. Yeah, it makes me a little bit nervous and to be like, and she's probably not, but we're like, we're probably like, she's totally looking. She's at me right totally now. looking right now. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think that at all when when Ariel had hung out with Bieber with me there. It's I didn't think anything of it. Like. He's married. It's That's more of a fun crush thing for the internet. I will say though, it's I'm a very confident guy, but imagine like, and I can be a little insecure in these kind of moments where we live in Hollywood with the most famous, successful, good looking, rich people out there. And those are the people that we end up at parties with. And so we'll be at an Emmy after party or something like that. And Ariel will end up talking to like one of the hottest celebrities you've ever seen. Like literally like a, a, a a uh, Chris Pratt, a uh, Ryan Reynolds, like some of these big yeah. Hollywood guys, yeah. and I have to just be like, "It's fine." Yeah, like I, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally, back. I'm totally okay with it, but I do take a step back to be like, "Damn, if that guy happens to be single at that moment and is hitting on her, like, damn, like I got some serious competition <laughs> here. Like, what do I do?" But Keep- part of that though is it's also the, obviously it's the the trust thing where it's just like. I think part of that too is you get a little super desensitized to it as well. Like when, it's like when I first moved here, obviously I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like that's that person and that's that person. And I still feel that way for sure. With some people, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the guy from The Bachelor, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, by the way, hilarious. It's not like, from- it's not the people you get starstruck with now aren't people that are like, you know, these like major like actors. blockbuster movie stars. It's like, it's like, oh, it's that dude from Netflix. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Like, oh dude. Okay. That's that TikTok dude. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyways, it's it's, it's kind of funny. It's, it's a weird world we live in, honestly. Yeah. It's bizarre. You know what's weird, though? I will say, as an influencer on social media, I never, ever get starstruck by any social media people. Yeah. As big as they are, if I follow them, if I love their content, I feel comfortable just casually being like, what's up, dude? And, and, and yeah. I don't know. I just feel more comfortable with that because they're not like a, a regular mainstream type celebrity. Right. But yeah. if I saw a... a, a Chris Pratt, who's in big movies right now that I love or whatever, I would definitely be more nervous meeting that well, it's person. Different too, because I feel like on in like in like social media and um and, and influencer, it's it's them. Like yeah, they, they true. are yes. they are being themselves. Yes, and so it's they're like, hey, I know you. Whereas like an actor, like you feel like you get glimpses, but you don't feel like you really know them. Yeah, and so you're like, I don't know. So that's that's like even when people come up to me with Dancing with the Stars, they're like they go, hey Derek, and they give me a hug, and they're like, and I'm like, whoa. Um, that's right because they we know each other like they they know they, me they, yeah they've been watching you and your personality for yeah, years because I'm, I'm I'm that's who I am mm-hmm. who I'm who I'm portrayed to be my you know who I am and out there is who I am um, so I could get like with an actor it's like how are they gonna react? Today's episode is brought to you by Emos Not Dead Coffee. Have you heard of them? Emos Not Dead Coffee is micro roasted, fair trade, and organic. Myself and Gavin, who picked out the coffee ourselves, tried. So many different flavors, so many different beans, and these one won because they taste amazing. I'm a coffee snob, and you guys, I'm telling you, you got to try it. Also, if you subscribe to our E&D coffee, you get 10% off on every single order. Emo is not dead coffee. I should have a tagline here, but I don't. I think I ran into, uh, was it Benji? Which one's dating um, Nicole Nicole Richie? Joel. Joel. Nicole. So I, I remember bumping into him and I was like, hey man, oh my gosh, I used to love your music so much. And I 
And that was the mistake I made. I said, I used to love it. Like, oh, man. I used to love your music so much. It was so great. And he was like, he was sweet. He was kind of, but then she kind of chimed in. She goes, did you hear that? Used to, you old man. Like, it was. Oh, it was burn. Shit. And it was, there was clearly like a funny yeah. thing they had together. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, no, I know. I still like yeah, it. And yeah. I love it, man. It's so great. The yeah. anthem is still in rotation. It's still. so good. <laughs> Damn. By so, the way, they those albums, like, regardless if you're, they went commercial or whatever, like, however you felt about it. Um, man, bangers. They their music is great, but like they had that mainstream success. Why people were like, "Oh man, they're sellouts." And it's like, no, their music just got successful. I feel like I feel like I was fortunate again living in London because those those bands, like the big like the big emo bands, would be huge, and I would be following them, and they maybe weren't quite they haven't quite broken out yet in the mm -hmm. UK. So when they would come over, they'd play these really small rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember Good Charlotte playing this, like it was like a 300 seater oh, room damn. or standing room and it was tiny. And they're playing like, it's a new day, but it all feels. And what was cool was like going to see them like this. And then the next time I saw them, I go see them like this. And then the next mm -hmm. time I saw them, I saw them at like Blown the up. big academy and stuff. So it was kind of cool. It was, that was kind of a fun thing to like see this, the progression and, Get a little bit of like a, a intimate setting with some of these bands. They might cool. they, they might be one of the last bands that like broke out because of TRL. Like oh, they were. They oh, were, they were. They, they were definitely a big TRL band yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they. I mean, Simple Plan was. Simple too. Plan was too. Yeah, I love Simple Plan. Corn. Corn. They actually. Corn was really. Yeah, they named the the third spot on TRL the Corn spot because it would always be like In Sync, Britney Spears, Corn, or like Damn. Eminem. I didn't know, you know that Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Corn. And so, yeah, TRL, I th they like took the boy band and they morphed it, and like Good Charlotte kind of fell in after the the boy band oh, kind dang. of thing had had died. And so, yeah, TRL, we met. I, I miss. Dude, that, I miss it. Shit. So I love TRL yeah. so much. It was my Same. favorite show. Really, TRL was my favorite show, and I think it was on five days a week. Yeah, and it was I think like it was after, on Monday after through school, Friday after school. Home. And the thing is, back then there weren't many channels, so like you, that was one of maybe sixty channels, yep. or one of fifty channels. And so I would always watch TRL. I loved it so much. It's just really interesting to think about, just like fifteen, ten years ago, mm -hmm. like how different even like discovering music or how bands broke break. Through. It's completely Dude, landscape is completely changed. things yeah. change so fast. Yeah. It terrifies me because yeah. like I got I blew up on Vine and then Vine went away completely. Yeah, so then yeah. I was like what do I do now? And then it was Instagram and now videos aren't doing as good on, on Instagram. You got to be a YouTuber. Shadow banned on so TikTok. So now yeah. we're now yeah. <laughs> so then I started TikTok and I got 1.6 million followers there and now I'm somehow like shadow banned from I don't know why. I just can't grow on TikTok anymore. Yeah. And it's like it's hard, dude. Yeah. Chasing chasing success is so damn difficult in the entertainment business. Yeah. And like I like even Gavin and I on this podcast were like, we hope this podcast works out. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. like just enough to keep the lights on. Yeah. Like not to like, we're not trying to like make a shit ton of money from it. We just want to be able to make enough money to fund the next podcast yeah. and like yeah. yep. fly guests in and be able to ha fly these guys in from Oregon to record. But like it's scary at the pace of where life is moving that like AI is going to take so many people's jobs. And Dude. it's like, what are those people going to do? Yeah. The writers, it's the writer strike right now. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, one of their th things is like we don't want a, and I'm like, how do you, how do you prevent a tool from being used? Yeah, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's, it's gonna, gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting like, it, and that's the thing is that the truth is like if you don't, if you don't use it, yeah, in some way, in some fashion, honestly, and other people do, you're just gonna get left behind, right? Yep. Or in some way, so it's like you can't really resist progress and resist certain things, but you can also be a little bit cautious about it and be like, hey, let's just like. But just I think I can't remember who was talking about it. But just making sure that there is um, things in place that give us like a, a third party that are able to like oversee certain things. Yeah. Because it does has potential to be dangerous. Totally. And if anything in the world that has potential to be dangerous, we have an oversight. Yeah. I'm like, hey, let's just make sure that things. I think good. it's a really simple solve. I think you just make AI have it should cite its sources. It should cite where it pulled from to give you the answer, and then you can see. You know what? What went into that calculation? That but they think added. about. But think about if you think about that. Now imagine there's ten thousand things right. you got to find. Would you really go through that? Right. You'd be like, wait, true. Right. that's true. I'm fine. I'm over this. But it's like a split, right? Like yeah. if you use my thing, to, if you use my script as a reference to produce another script, I should get a split because 
You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like there's there's a technological solve. Um, sure. And it, it was interesting, you know, obviously I'm not from LA, but just driving around and seeing the rider strike yep. in what's happening. And, you know, I have some buddies that we were with a buddy of mine who's like in, you know, the Hollywood scene. And, and it's, it's, it's interesting to hear the perspective of someone like who's like, no, dude, like rider strike, like they got to win this. Yeah. But then from the complete outsider's perspective, which is me, and I'm like, well, AI is a tool. You should just kind of, you should own, you should figure out how to make that work for you as a rider and maybe not. Which, up. by the way, I think they will. I yeah. think that even if whatever happens, I think riders, they will use this yeah. as a tool. I think I'm almost positive. I, right. I, I'd be very surprised if they don't eventually. But it's more just protecting it, like, but you can't replace. Yeah. A job with that. I tried to replace Matt. I tried to get a felt. I'm still here. Didn't work. I'm still here, bitch. Yeah, I tried to get. (laughs) I tried to get a felt. You know my delete script written. By the way, if I if I could type in as like choreograph, amazing routine, please, and do it, I'd be like, thank you. Yeah, thank Thank you so much. (laughs) You you know what? Here, the thing is, dude. Like, I don't want to watch a TV show written by AI, and that's just me. And I don't want to watch most TV shows written by humans. (laughs) (laughs) Some are so bad. True. Some are so bad. But like, I would be completely fine stopping where we are now. I, I like some people are just for AI and more of it, and like self-driving cars, and like there's a lot of great to it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like I'm scared of where it's gonna go. I truly am. And yeah. like the I saw I saw this news on TikTok. So who knows how real it is? But uh, you'd probably know about this. The who's like the godfather of AI, and he spoke out recently yeah. saying, uh, "Oh yeah, I what's his name? About, yeah, I know who you're talking. He was like, he was one of the founders of OpenAI. Yeah, he spoke out." saying hey guys it's getting too far and it's getting dangerous and he's he is warning people right now that it's going to get somewhere possibly bad yeah. because if they end up building robots to do to do day-to-day things delivering this security they're going to have robots doing probably security and re- face scanning and recognizing people that are have access or don't have access if those ai intelligence get too smart and can over and get overridden by I don't know some other country yeah. to to attack us. I don't know. Well, I, the, the problem it is, it can get it can get really it's weird. It's all bizarre, man. It's bizarre. Already, we're already so lazy, just as yeah. <laughs> just humans. I think just in general, and I don't mean that as like in a, in a physical aspect. I mean just as like a as an emotional aspect, and I think that that's why we have, we see so much anxiety now as well because it's a uh, it's we've we don't know how to handle things a lot now yep. because it, it things are just. Well, it's too easy. Yeah, and and that's it comes from not having these um, you know difficulties to overcome and to work through and stuff like that. So we the slightest thing gets us like you know anxious and and I think that, that that's just going to increase by the the easier we make life by default the, the more anxious we become. I feel like you yeah. Know? yeah, and then and we focus we really focus on these really small problems instead of because yeah that we don't have big problems really no think. well be, I, I, well here okay I'm gonna get a little deep now I don't know yeah let's go. But like, so our brains are, we're still these like million year old brains. And back in the day, hunter gatherers, you know, we are looking for, you know, danger, Mm -hmm. right? It's not designed to make us happy. It's designed to make us survive. And it's designed to look for what's wrong and what's, what's going to happen, you know, um, so we can survive. We we live like the saber tooth tiger or the don't eat those berries or do the, and we're working on the same software now, but we're like, we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff now. We're like, have fresh water, we have food, we have cars, we have homes, but we're working on the software, so we're looking for what's wrong. We're still looking for what's wrong. We're like, what, what's uh, what's the danger here? But instead of like a saber tooth tiger, we're like, well, what's this person thinking about me? Yeah, true. What's, so what's true. happening over here? Am, am, I, am I significant enough? Am I important enough? And, da, da, da. Hmm. and we're working on that same software, so it's not designed to make us happy. It's designed, it's doing this job. Yep. It's looking for what's wrong. And we have to be mindful to like consciously look for what's right and look for what's good and like yeah. look for like, hey man, it's just a perspective shift. Yeah, it's but but it's but it can be difficult if you don't understand that it's just doing its job, yeah. but it's old software working in a new world. Yep. Yeah. And we have to, you know if, if we just continue to go on this autopilot and allow everything to do everything for us, this will continue to do the Work. old thing and just yeah. look for what's wrong, and we're just more and more and more anxious and stuff. By and the way, some, so you know, speaking on that. I feel like that and I have a lot lately that now that when I was just, when I was a server at a restaurant and I physically went to work and I I picked up plates, I interacted with people and I that's what I did to make a living, I was genuinely happier. I felt happier. Yeah. And then suddenly once I started getting some success on Vine and then I have to make more videos, I have to make more videos, I have to write more, I have to write more and then once I started 
once I moved to behind a desk and started doing the physical things for to, to make a living to survive, doing physical stuff, yeah, and even like down to working out less, I started sensing myself to become. I started feeling, and I've never felt this before, but some sort of anxiety and depression. Yeah. So after not yeah. after leaving physical work behind and just jumping to just like computer type work is when I started. My, my first time ever experiencing anxiety. Yeah. And yeah. I've had to learn how to like, I got to make sure to keep working out. I have to make sure to like pray in the morning, walk, be outside and do certain things like that. And I'm curious for you, do you, do you ever deal with any sort of anxiety? Sure. And how do you deal with it? Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, that's the thing. There, there's definitely people and, and friends I have and who, you know, need support with that, you know what I mean? With their anxiety and, 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 uh, and I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know for me personally, one of the fastest ways to change the way you feel is to change the way you move your body, your physiology. Um, and there's <clears throat> like literally like your, your, your cortisol levels, you know, change and stuff when you're actually moving your body physically. That's why working out, you feel better, you feel good. Um, and I feel like we're often we're in this point in our lives where we're very busy in our minds and very still in our bodies because we're driving, we're driving the car, we sit down, we have like all of our... TV on our phones now and all these things. But I think we just flip that over. We need to get like busy in our bodies more, more, more active, more physical in what we do. And in turn, we'll be more still in our minds. And, you know, again, going back to the anxiety, even right now, prepping for my tour right now, yeah. um, the pressure of feeling like I got this got to be better than ever. I got to make sure I deliver. I got to make sure all these things and, and it can get overwhelming. Um, but again, it's, 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 I'm setting all these expectations and that's the thing too. We, when we live in these expectations, um, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment. Mm -hmm. So it's trading your expectation for appreciation. And, and it's that whole thing about gratitude. And we hear it all the time. You're like, Oh my gosh, another be grateful. And you're, you know, but you can't be fearful and angry in the presence of gratitude. You, you, like you can't be angry and grateful at the same time. Yeah. You can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. So once gratitude is the antidote, to fear. And so that trading your expectation for appreciation in a moment is a good way for me to take a breath and be like, hey, man, what's absolutely happening right now? Because also the anxiety that I feel sometimes is the future. I'm focusing on the future. And yeah. I, I'm a worrier, man. I yeah. worry. I'm like, what's going on? What's going to happen? And same, dude. I got to do this and I got to do this. But if I actually stop and like I just take get present like right this moment with you guys like there's nothing else exists except for me I'm talking with you right now yeah. and yeah. dude I'm talking with you right now and that's it I'm yeah. having I, I'm having that moment right now of feeling present and and truly enjoying a conversation with you and like dude we're friends and we see each other at events and stuff like that but like I'm so stoked that you're just here having a conversation and literally five minutes ago I was like I need to like reach out to my friends like you more to actually. Be present with them and go have a coffee and just fucking talk. Yeah. I need to do that more because it's, I don't know, like something that you said, I'm like, damn, it's crazy that we're so just, I'm always future, future. Yeah. But am I going to be safe? Am I, am I going to be successful in the future? What if the cruise too doesn't work out? What if this doesn't work out? I'm constantly thinking about that. Yeah. And it makes my days feel more longer and more miserable and more yeah. anxious. And like, I'm trying my best to not think like that. I'm trying my best to say yes to more things that involve seeing a buddy, yeah. go like going to the gym. And it's crazy how much, how important that is. Yeah. It's yeah. really, really important to try to find a way to be present. Language, the language you use to describe your experience yeah. becomes your experience. Yep. Language is so important. It's so, so important. And so it's, it's important to like be mindful about the way we, the way we describe our experiences in yep. our life. And, um, and whatever you focus on is what you feel and where our focus goes, our energy flows. Right. So if I focus on what's bad, I'm going to feel bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just it. Yep. You know, as simple as that. It's very simplistic, but it's like, it's true, you know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and what's bad is always available, but so is what's good. Right. And that's the thing. If we just, what's available? Take a second okay. and just yeah. focus on the good instead. Yeah. As, as busy as you are and thinking about the future and stuff like that, do you wish that you had more just free time? Do you ever just think like, or are you the type of person that needs to be constantly be busy because that fulfills you and you enjoy that? But like, don't you ever sit back and be like, damn, I wish I was just off for a week in a row to lounge and do this with my fiance and go see some friends I haven't seen. Do you ever feel like that? I, my problem honestly is, is like right now I actually have a, a lot of time. Actually, I have oh. a lot of time 
more than I've had in the past. Usually I'm like, boom, 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 boom. But I've actually had some time. Um, but what ends up happening for me is that I'm, I'm so worried about getting ahead of what's coming next. Yep. So even though I have like a month where I'm like, I'm not really doing anything this month, but I'm like planning. I'm like, I'm like, it's all ideas. Well, what about this song? And what about yeah. this thing? And maybe I need to go book a studio time to like get ahead of the game. Cause then when I start doing the creative process, I don't want to be behind. So I actually don't even sometimes give myself the time I have. Yep. Um, cause I'm trying to get ahead of the game cause I'm a worrier. I'm yep. always worrying about what's coming and what's in the future. Um, but no, it's, it's more the, not that I wish I had more time. I wish I, um, managed it a little bit better you know what i mean yeah i uh, yeah. think sometimes where i was like i actually just not want to think about anything and just you know but but nature does that for me yeah you know nature like being outside and like around a tree or fresh cut grass like yeah it helps me go like okay nothing really is that important yeah except for this freaking tree yeah <laughs> you know the I mean? smell like, of this fresh cut grass like yeah, that's dude. literally like yeah. all that really dude, matters it, right it's now, you know? wild how the outdoors speaks to people yeah. like like i desperately need it primal and like i've been in the mornings instead of waking up and even having my coffee at home and, and opening my laptop i've been leaving the house just getting in the house driving down the street and going on a little bit of a walk in nature or like sit in a park or whatever it does wonders for me. Yeah. And I think yes. that anyone even watching this that wants to try something new or feels stuck in their routine is like, even if you have to wake up an hour earlier, I know no one really wants to wake up earlier than they have to, <laughs> yeah. but it, it will actually be worth it trying to wake up an hour earlier for a whole week and getting outside, getting some exercise. It does so much. It does yeah. so much for it me. It really does. Like yeah. I desperately need that. And that's yeah. the thing too, is you don't have to, you don't have to do anything crazy, man. Yep. Just start walking. Just go. Just get out there, you know. And and, and there's always that express. There's a great expression. It's like, you know, I was like, well, someday I'll do that. Someday I'll get in the gym, and someday I'll do that. And and it's like, you know, the path of someday leads to a town called nowhere. Uh -huh. You know, you just keep putting it off until eventually. So you just start and go. And and another good one too. Sorry, I'm turning this into like a whole. thing. No, we but, love this. But you know, just again the language thing. Yep. And it changes your focus, and it's like. A really good tool too is trade your shoulds. Sorry, trade your must. Sorry, trade your shoulds into musts. Yep. So like you're like I should work out more. I was like no, I must work. I out must. More. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. I should. I should call my mom more often. No, I, I just must call my mom yeah. more often. And it's like it's a must. There's more urgency. There's more of like a this is this has to happen. Yeah. And we just should all over ourselves. Basically, we're like yeah, I should do that. Yeah, we should meet up sometime. Yeah. Hey, we should hang out more. We should hang out more. No, we must hang we out. We must more, hang out more. I we love must. that. Like it's just like it's a different Damn. Yeah. language shift. Yeah. Yep. Um, I do have I mean, I know we're kind of going over time a little yep. bit. So it's I have one good. more thing that I want to talk to you about. Yeah. Um, I noticed I actually saw it, I feel like through news before you posted about it, but you have a deal with Disney and ABC. You have a contract with them. Uh huh. How much is that? <laughs> uh it's it's bank. No. <laughs> no. So kidding. no, so what so what is I'm that deal? You're developing TV, you're developing TV with yeah. them, or so like have, what? What can you share about it? Um, so basically, yeah. So like, so like an all around deal basically is like I'm exclusive to ABC and to Disney Plus, okay. um, and to Disney the whole family, um, which works out because it's obviously Dance with the Stars is a part of that family, and which is cool. They're actually going to be this next season is going to be on Disney Plus and ABC for the first time, which is very exciting. But yes, I also have, um, if I have like a project or if I have an idea that I obviously take it to them and then like we can develop certain things and got it. And actually currently developing something right now and I'm actually shooting the pilot for it. I've been pitching this show for 12 years, dude. Whoa. Like literally 12 years, pitching it around and everybody's like, I love this idea. It just sounds too expensive or I just, not the right time or whatever it is. Yeah. So timing is so important. Like if you have an idea that you've had, never like let go of it. Just keep keep going. It just might just be the wrong time, because totally. finally this this one clicked, and um, I'm working with National Geographic, and it's like like a dream show. And I'm filming the pilot July in the middle of July. Are you in it? Yeah. Oh, you're in it. Oh, you, I'm in it. Can you share a little bit about the concept? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's basically I'm just gonna kind of do it. It's basically like the Bear Grylls of dance. Okay. Or, Interesting. Or like the Anthony Bourdain of dance, in the sense that. Oh, cool! You're like in a travel. It's like traveling around to the origins of where these dances. Oh my god! Came I love from that's so cool. I love and it. And understanding the culture and the history, but then also like where is it? Where is it now? And who are the best people? And so, and then of course taking this, I have this great partner now, who's my producing partner, 
Um, and uh, she's going to be the first guest as well. And we're going to go to this amazing country and learn the culture and the dances and the styles and stuff. And then they have this uh, big thing. So And it's going to be like Nat Geo style. So yeah, that is so gorgeous. Sick. That's a beautiful. great concept. Dude, that's a really, really good concept. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's, and, and for me, it was always like a no-brainer. I was like, guys, this this feels like it's just like a no-brainer. Every it is. Every culture, every country, every place has their dance. Yeah. And, um, and it's primal. It's in us yeah. all. And so... It was just something I just kept plugging away. I'm like, this is definitely a show. And then finally just kind of happened. So Sick. It's, uh, it's cool, man. I'm so excited about it. Filming the pilot in July yeah. and then you're going on tour. Yes. So when when is tour? Oh, yeah. Let's, Dude. Let, yeah, let's promote some Derek Huff right Dude. now. Yeah. Let's talk about it. It's yeah. happening. So uh, the tour is, I'm hitting 56 cities. And it's the first time I've toured in four years. Sick. 56 yeah. cities. Yeah. That blew Dude. my mind. I'm gonna die. No. Whoa, dude! And yeah. and actually, I'll say this: I'm hitting 56 cities, and at the same time, I'm doing Dancing with the Stars. So I'll be doing like I'll be in like Pittsburgh or New York or something, and then I'm like I have to fly back to LA and do Dancing with the Stars live, and then fly back out the next day to like Texas or something, and then Whoa. do a show. See, that's so. the Derek Huff that I know. Yeah, it's this, this whole no, month off say, thing is weird to me. I was just yeah. gonna say you hate yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, like you're gonna be traveling. It's it's gonna be brutal, but but again, it's cool because it's that intention of like I'm doing it because I love I love like you know connecting with people. Yep. And you know what's funny? I always find this so funny too. Like, um, like the meet and greets. You know, when you meet people before a show, and it's the whole thing. When I hear about like celebrities or stars or or rock stars or whoever it is, like an artist meet, you know, people and they're like, they're terrible to them or like they can't, they have to stand six feet away and take a picture or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you, then don't do it. Like, yeah. like yeah. it's my favorite part. I love interacting with people and seeing them, you know, face to face and giving them a hug and talking. I love it them. so much. I love it too. It's the best. I love it so much and too. It, and what it does is it, it primes me. So even if I feel tired or exhausted and I have those meet and greets, it primes me for the show to where I'm like I am I'm ready to go. Yeah, you know, that just gave me so much energy and so much life because so much support and love too. You like, remember like why you're doing it? Yeah, because you know you've done the show now like 40 times. You're exhausted. Yeah, and you see this person and you're like, oh, this person hasn't seen this yet. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna give them the I'm gonna I'm, give them the best I'm show about ever. To go, I'm about to go do something for you right now. And the energy, that. bro. That's it. That's you it. know who's been doing that that I've been seeing? Like post Malone, I've been seeing his clips. He's such a genuine guy, loves his fans to death. D is not a great dancer, but just dances. Oh, yeah. that's dances on stage and just he just goes crazy on stage. <laughs> it's amazing. And he just loves doing what he does and you feel it. But by the way, and I love that. Going so back much. to the dance thing. When you see him do that, you don't go like, oh my gosh, no. what, a, what an idiot. No, you no. love it. You go like, what a dude. Like, he's so comfortable and like, so like, hey man, I'm yep. just, he's just, you look at that and you go, man, freedom. Freedom. Like, yeah. freedom. Wow. And like, what's more masculine than freaking freedom? Like, so nothing, true. Right? It's confidence. Like, it's confidence. It's freedom. I love that so amazing. much. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Can you give a little bit of a, a, a description of what the, what the tour is? Entails. Entails. Yeah, it's yeah. um, it's basically like a rock concert for dance. You know, as far as um, you know, high energy live music. I have like you know musicians, um, and uh, an amazing cast of dancers, like top of the top. They're unbelievable, and um, extravagant costumes and different looks and different genres of music too. It's from like rock and roll to big band music to contemporary to pop music to. You know, classics, oldies, yeah. current music. I mean, just the whole spectrum. Um, and uh, and I'm actually calling this tour Symphony of Dance. And the reason why I'm doing that is, one, a symphony is broken up into four movements. You have, like, horn, strings, wind, percussion. And each one of those movements sort of lend themselves to a style of dance, right, or a feeling or an emotion. And without getting too much into it, but the idea that, like, the messaging behind it as well is, it's all about collaboration. Yeah. It's all about collaborating, right? That's like literally like life is so much better when we work together and and just like a symphony, like we all play our instruments. We all have our gifts, our talents, you know, whatever it might be. But when we come together and we collaborate, we become like this beautiful symphony. That's wow. cool. That's and, awesome. Um, and so that's, 
that's kind of the idea, and it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, man. I'm excited, and I'm I'm gonna be on the road with my fiance. Nice. And maybe wife by then. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, oh. Oh, you're getting married in the middle of all this, too. Dude. Let's throw that in there. Let's throw that in there, dude. Oh, oh my God. Wow. Oh, my God. Wait. It's so much going on. In the middle of Dude, you have a lot on your plate, bro. It's a lot going on right now, guys. Is the wedding planned? It's all happening. Yeah. Our invitations just got in today. Nice. So those will be being sent out. Oh, man. Nice. So, yeah. That's, Damn. That's exciting. Damn, bro. Any any guest, uh, any any like special guests you have planned to, to pop into certain cities? Is is it gonna be any uh like Mark Ballas maybe in maybe J- might, he maybe might. get J Lo in there? Yeah, J Lo for sure. Yeah. She'll be there. For, she'll be at the. Uh, couldn't think of a city quick enough. Yeah, ben, <laughs> ben Affleck. You yeah, know, yeah, he's yeah, gonna, yeah. yeah. But um, I think Mark might get up and, and do something though for sure because cool. he's he's been playing guitar on some of the tracks. Oh, cool. and he shreds. Yeah, he's yeah. he's so. I good. love his music. I love yeah. his music. He's super talented man and. Uh, and and his wife BC, her yeah. voice is incredible. And like, there's some songs where I get, I'm getting the tracks, and I'm like, I didn't really, really like the vocal on it originally. So I'm like, can you do the vocal BC? Because it's so yeah. really amazing. So yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And like Lindsey Sterling is playing on some of the tracks, violin, and um, so it's it's great to be able to call upon some really cool friends and, and yeah, collaboration, collaborate it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it's all about, man. I mean, you guys know. I mean, the ultimate collaborators right here. Yeah, like, trying. It's it's literally like the coolest thing to see, you know. Uh, a, a, like a fun skit, and then all of a sudden you're like, "What, Tony Hawk?" Or yeah. freaking like yeah. this guy. Like, it's unbelievable to see, and people not only willing but like wanting to be a part of that. It's yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. It's yeah. pretty freaking exciting. Pretty awesome what y'all built over here, man. Hey. Dude, thank you, bro. I'm a fan. I'm hey. a fan. No, bro, I'm a fan <laughs> honestly, dude, I have to. Uh, first of all, thank you for being on the podcast, and you are a huge supporter. Like you're a very supportive friend. When I started doing this brand and I asked you to be involved, you me- you immediately were like, "I'm there." Yeah. And by the way, you should be happy to know to this date. Our video is the biggest one. Hey, hey dude. Yep. It's this the, is the first one that no, I saw. The one of us dancing, the very first one to 30 Seconds to Mars is the biggest indie video yet. Dude. And it was um, that was that was like lightning in a bottle. Not no, no, because we we've done other great things, but that one was like one of those moments where as soon as it happened, we're like, oh, this was this was special. Yeah. Yeah. Even that moment where it was kind of like that improvised line where it was like, so you think you can dance? <laughs> no. And you're like, no. I, I know I can. I know I can. I'm <laughs> yeah. just going to dance. It's freaking awesome. Well, bro, thank you for joining us. And uh, again, you guys, we're going to link uh, in link in the bio. What am I trying to say here? Help me, Gavin. Link in the description. We're going to link. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to link in the description where you can find Derek Huff tickets to his tour um, and all his social handles below. So make sure to give him a follow. Show him some love. And ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Derek Huff. Thank you all so much. Thank you guys.